This is a work of political and social commentary. The content of this video is not meant for children under the age of 13. Parental discretion is advised. In the English language, we have a very old saying, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. It's a reference to the difficulty in making certain puddings. It's quite possible that a failed pudding can look just like a successful pudding, especially when referring to plum pudding. In America, we have shortened this phrase to the proof is in the pudding. Without the point of reference, though, the meaning of this phrase is often mistaken to be a reference to effort, not a reference to success. I've posted three videos about impeachment so far. Given the latest developments, it's time for another round of roasted opinions on the subject. Let's see if the proof of the pudding is still in the eating. So, after a lengthy investigation, the House voted out two articles of impeachment, over a month ago. Now, I could be charitable and allow for the fact that there was a holiday break. I won't be so generous, though. This process is far too important to be delayed by political wrangling. Those articles should have been transmitted to the Senate without undue delay, and I'm convinced that undue delay was involved. Nancy Pelosi didn't bring the vote on impeachment managers and transmitting the articles until January 15th. And why, you may ask? Because she wanted assurances regarding the proceedings from the Senate Majority Leader, Mitch McConnell. At least, that's what she said. Timing is everything when cooking a plum pudding. Too long or too short, and the pudding will fail. It has to be pulled out at the right time, a tricky business even today. That rule would also apply to the vote on delivering the Articles of Impeachment, it seems, because January 15th was also the date on which the United States and China signed their Phase 1 trade agreement. That trade agreement is the first sign of real progress in the trade war which is slowing the global economy. It relaxes tariffs on billions of dollars worth of goods and services and makes purchasing agreements on important trade goods like agricultural commodities and manufactured goods. If successful, the Phase 1 agreement will mean that America's farmers will see the prices on their crops go up just in time for election season. If successful, it will mean that American manufacturing will get a significant boost. This is a significant event for America's economy, and a significant boost to Donald Trump's re-election chances. How could the Democrat Party, with its still extensive list of mediocre candidates, shut down the bump in popularity from a deal which has been 18 months in the making and at least 18 years overdue. Timing is everything. By scheduling the vote on the same day as the signing of this trade deal, Pelosi stood her best chance of pushing the signing of the Phase 1 deal off to the side in favor of coverage of the impeachment proceedings. People were less concerned with Trump signing a massive trade deal with over $200 billion in guaranteed purchases by China, focusing instead on just how much money was spent on the 30 pens Pelosi used to sign the Articles of Impeachment. I said it before, and I'll say it again. This isn't about getting rid of Trump before January of 2021. This is about hurting Trump's campaign before the general election. It's about bolstering the chances of picking up seats in Congress during that election by allowing Democrats to tar their GOP opponents as being in league with Trump. The great Satan who lures decent Americans into a devil's deal with his focus on restoring America's position as the preeminent global power. It's about leveraging non-issues against Trump. At least, they were non-issues when Democrats like Joe Biden did the exact same things for years. It's not something new and shocking. This is how foreign relations have been conducted since the United States was founded. In other words, the impeachment is partisan politics as usual. Now, Nancy and company may think that they are, have actually accomplished something. Then again, maybe Nancy doesn't, because the lead manager from the House for the Senate trial is Adam Schiff. Ask any Trump supporter, or for that matter, anyone who has followed the impeachment process from the start, and they will tell you that this has been Adam Schiff's show all along. His face is the face of the Trump impeachment. If successful, Schiff may very well become a force to be reckoned with in the Democrat Party. If unsuccessful, then he provides a layer of separation on impeachment 
for Pelosi and her Senate counterpart, Chuck Schumer. If, as may yet happen, the impeachment turns out to be a complete dud, then Schiff becomes the sacrificial lamb. He's from a safe district in California, though, so even though we may see nothing more than status quo antebellum when the smoke clears, Schiff may still be in his seat. The proof of the pudding is in the eating, folks. So far, though, this process has struck me as half-baked. The investigation proceeded without a clear indication of what acts for which the president would be charged, and the charges levied against the president amounted to Pelosi and company doing their best Greta Thunberg impression. Donald Trump is changing the rules of the Washington game. How dare you? That sort of petulance leaves a sour taste in my mouth. It seems that the elected officials in Washington, and for that matter, the unelected career bureaucrats in the federal government, need another reminder that they work for us. Not them, us. We the people are the source of their authority, and I'm fed up with the way that they use that delegated power. Meanwhile, insiders all expect that this impeachment will die in the Senate. It takes 67 votes to convict and remove the president. No one inside the Beltway actually believes that those votes exist. If, however, the House Democrats can get the GOP to line up one more time to vote against removing Trump, I honestly think that Nancy may believe that this will help the Democrats in 2020. The Never Trump crowd has loudly agreed with removing Trump, projecting a level of division in the GOP which exists mostly on Twitter. The trial needs to be swift, but fair. If Trump actually did something worthy of impeachment, and not just something which offends the Democrats, then securing a conviction and removing him from office should be no problem at all. If, on the other hand, he didn't do anything for which he should be removed, then it confirms that this process has been used as a political weapon against the GOP all along. That's an absolute disgrace and an abuse of power in its own right, because the precedent of impeaching for purely partisan politics is now firmly established. You know how this goes, folks. Once a dirty trick is accepted as a legitimate tactic in Washington politics, then it becomes commonplace, and the government becomes even more divided, even more dysfunctional, and even less effective. The best way to let Washington know what we think of their antics is at the voting booth, folks. Make sure to register as a voter, and then let your vote register your displeasure.